Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to be talking about the biphasic response to intensity. Now, most people should know about the biphasic dose response to red light therapy and to many medicines and drugs. And typically, people attribute that biphasic dose response to your joules per centimeter squared, your energy density, or your fluence. All those are kind of the same terms for the same thing. But there are many studies and articles and researchers that are noting that there's a biphasic response to intensity as well. And so that's your power density, your intensity, your milliwatts per centimeter squared. Those are all different terms for the same thing. And so power is the rate at which energy is delivered. So it's how fast you're delivering energy. And so like many things in life, it follows this biphasic dose response, this Arnold Schultz law, this law of hormesis, that small amounts of something may not have an effect, that having the right amount of something will have a stimulatory response, and having too much of it will have an inhibitory response. And so we'll be going over a bunch of studies that show that intensity has a biphasic response and not just energy density. And so this first article I wanted to cover was recently published on PubMed, and that's what reminded me to do a video about this. And it's a study of photobiomodulation on isolated cells that produce hairs and various light modes and parameters that they use to try to optimize. And so one of the top highlights they have here for this article clearly says irradiance affects the effects of continuous wave photobiomodulation and exhibits a biphasic dose response. And so they tried a bunch of different irradiances, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 milliwatts per centimeter squared, all at the same dose of joules per centimeter squared. So that means they calculated different exposure times to reach the same energy density. So according to the law of reciprocity, the energy density delivered should have the same photochemical effects regardless of how fast it was delivered. That's the law of reciprocity. So theoretically, all of these intensities should have the same exact response because they all delivered the same energy density. But as many studies before them have also found, they found an optimal cell viability and proliferation was maximized at eight milliwatts per centimeter squared. So, so again, if you have enough data points, somewhere in the middle is the optimal intensity. It's not all about getting the highest intensity. So let's go back to 2011, this article, Biphasic Dose Response in Low-Level Light Therapy, an update. So this very key article that goes over the biphasic dose response, and it includes a lot of details about how intensity has a biphasic response. And so you might recognize a two-dimensional version of the biphasic dose response graph that correlates your cellular response to your energy density, your dose. But in this article, they're proposing a three-dimensional model for biphasic dose response in considering the power density on one axis and the time on another axis. So that way you're appreciating both power density and time. That's your true dose according to a lot of researchers is to consider power density and time independently and not always just mathematically calculate them together for energy density because you lose a lot of important information there. But you can see this biphasic dose response is very reminiscent of what we see in two dimensions, but now it's in three dimensions, where if you start out in this corner and you're increasing your dose, then you have no effect if you have very little, little dose, and then you start to get an effect when you get adequate power density and time, and then if you have too much, then it goes into the inhibitory region where cellular functions are inhibited or arrested or slowed down or induces apoptosis. But now we can analyze these new dimensions. So we can clearly see at this highest peak, we have a relatively low intensity, if we follow this line across, and relatively longer exposure time. So this is the best peak of stimulation. This is the optimal response. But if we go down to this corner, now we have relatively high intensity and short exposure time. And you can imagine maybe, you know, you can calculate they have similar energy densities, but now at the high intensity and short time, that you can see the stimulation is much lower. So even if you get the dose correct, your stimulation is on the lower end compared to this higher peak on the low intensity side. And of course, with high intensity, it only takes a short amount of time to drop off this clip and end up in the inhibitory region. So you imagine maybe you wanna land an airplane. Do you wanna land it at high speeds on a short runway? Or do you wanna land it at a little bit slower speeds on a longer runway?
And so that's what we're trying to do with red light therapy. We want to increase the odds in our favor, use a relatively low intensity for adequate exposure time, and you have be the best chances of a better stimulation and less likelihood of missing the target. And so now here's a YouTube video on the Brain-PBM channel with James Carroll explaining another study that also showed a biphasic response to intensity. I'm going backwards up my list of parameters, irradiance and dose rate effects. Or going the opposite way, you could put 5,000 milliwatts per centimeter squared onto a superficial condition, treat it for 0.6 of a second. You still delivered 3 joules per centimeter squared, but you won't have had any effect. There's a speed limit to, photo, to photobiology. So you cannot rush these things, delivering it in 0.6 of a second. And yet, and everybody who spent time around photobiomodulation is kind of aware of this, and they think they know about irradiance or power density. And I lecture, and people get up and do a new thing on how we looked at the dose rate effects of light you know, on a, on a new model or something. And one more time, everybody's informed this thing exists. And then in casual conversation, they say, oh, I gave this many joules per centimeter squared, that many joules per centimeter squared. They don't say, I gave 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared for 60 seconds. Um, so they've doubled the irradiance, they've halved the time, they're still 0.3 of a joule per centimeter squared, and you can see the effect is getting better. They've moved from here to there now, and then increasing the irradiance by a factor of four, reducing it by a factor of four, you're down to 15 seconds, 20 milliwatts per centimeter squared, still 0.3 of a joule per centimeter squared, same so-called dose every time, three different results. So don't talk to me about joules per centimeter squared. Talk to me about milliwatts per centimeter squared and time. You can tell me the joules per centimeter squared if you like. There's tons of studies on isolated cells and on small animal models that show the biphasic response to intensity. So I've only found one study that directly tested the effects of different power densities at the same energy de density on humans. And so they had 28 athletes and they're testing the muscle performance response to photobiomodulation. Now they said in a previous study, they established that 10 joules was the best dose for this type of treatment. And they used power outputs of 100, 200, or 400 milliwatts to try to see which one had the best results again, all using the same dose. And note that these are milliwatts and not milliwatts per centimeter squared, because a lot of times with lasers, they just tell you the total power and they don't divide by the area. And what they found was they showed improvements at 100 and 200 milliwatts, but not so much with 400 milliwatts and the best results seemed to come from 100 milliwatts. So that was the lowest power that they used. So anyway, here's a bunch more articles that say there's some sort of biphasic aspect to not just energy density, but to power density and intensity or irradiance. So look for those terms. And here's four more articles also indicating there's a biphasic aspect to power density. So what's the mechanism of this biphasic response to intensity? You gotta know the mechanism. You can't just observe empirically these effects from tons of studies without telling me the mechanism. In a review article by Dr. Hamblin, Mechanisms in Mitochondrial Redox Signaling and Photobiomodulation, he offers one theory for this. However, if the levels of superoxide within the mitochondria exceed the capacity of MNSOD to detoxify it, then the charged O2 may accumulate within the mitochondrial matrix and cause damage. To detoxify superoxide may depend on the rate at which O2 is produced, which in turn may depend on the rate at which light is delivered, i.e. power density. And so basically that's a fancy way of saying the higher power density will create more ROS and the cells may not be able to detoxify it as quickly and those ROS may go and cause problems within the cell. This consideration may explain some observations that have been made where the biological effects of PBM depended on the power density of the light and not the total dose. So that was a non-thermal mechanism, but we know high intensity often produces more heat. So it's very hard to decouple those variables. Is it the intensity of the light or is it the heat being produced that's causing these problems? So in this article, they're purposely using higher intensities to cause inhibition of nerve cells because they know high intensity causes in inhibition. So you can use that almost therapeutically if you want to blunt the nerve cells, which will reduce your pain signals and act like anesthesia. And so they clearly say, because inhibitory PBM operates at higher irradiances than standard PBM, possible thermal effects are considered. 
So if you want to cause cellular inhibition, then we already know the recipe, high intensity and heat. And so again, here's just another article. You can just pause it and read it yourself. But they're talking about how low intensity is used for mitochondrial stimulation and healing, and high intensity is caused for inhibition if you want to cause temporary pain relief. So one guideline I like to follow is, is from some of these articles, the effects of infrared radiation on human skin. So a lot of times they're talking about uh, near-infrared radiation as well. And they discuss this means that even if administered at the same total dose, light sources with lower irradiances, less than 50 milliwatts per centimeter squared, are less likely to produce deleterious effects, e.g. thermal burns, increased MMP1, compared to those with higher irradiances greater than 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And so that's it for today. Hopefully you can appreciate that there's a biphasic aspect to intensity and not just energy density. Thanks for tuning in.